You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We'll preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth, or we'll sentence them to take the last step into a thousand years of darkness. We can deport violent, illegal criminals. That makes a lot of sense. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. Obama was not the president for this system. Do you think that House Democrats and Senate Democrats should try to cooperate with Donald Trump if he tries to kick people off their health insurance? We're going to have a Youngstown street fight. The American people, they voted against Hillary. They voted against this administration. We pledge allegiance to one flag, and that flag is the American flag. Welcome to the Abolitionists Roundtable, your all-access pass to the 2017 Red, White, and Blue Conservative Revolution. Join the conversation at 734-822-1600. Now, here are your hosts, Del Marsh, Phil Starchill, and Janice Daniels. Well, greetings. Thank you for joining the Abolitionists Roundtable. Uh, yeah, a talk show like no other. Uh, you, you, you can find no other talk show like this here in this uh, in this region in uh, Southeast Michigan. Um, this is uh, we come from a conservative perspective. We believe in doing it in red, white, and blue. Uh, you know, so we don't look at you know we look at the ideology, a philosophy of uh, how people do things, and we can see that it, you know one philosophy is very destructive. But on the other side of the break, we're going to get into a little bit about the culture, pop culture, politics, uh, some of the things, some of the news headlines that's going on. But today, um, we, we want to celebrate this this weekend. This is the this is like the Christian Super Bowl weekend. Uh, myself and Phil and the mayor are as Christians. Uh, this is a big week, big weekend for us to celebrate. To celebrate that uh, that on on Good Friday. I don't know if you went to. I hope you had a chance to go to Good Friday service. I did. It was a great uh, service. But uh, it, it but it just reminded uh, me again that uh, that mankind needed a savior, and uh, and we know that. It, you know, God sent him, uh, a savior for us. He sent his son and his son, you know, took took on himself our sin. He took on himself, you know, our pain. He took on himself our sickness, our poverty. He took on himself whatever it is that you want to put on him in exchange so that you can have joy, so that you can have peace, you and I. And so today we want to just, um, this first half, we want, if you like to call in and just tell us, a, you know, tell us your favorite, uh, if you like, your favorite um, your favorite Bible story, if you like. Or if you, if you don't want to do that, you, you know, tell us, um, as a kid, I, as a kid, I grew up around church, so that's all I knew all my life. And I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, every year I had to, as a kid, I had to, we had an Easter speech and I, uh, or, or I had my, uh, you know, I had to memorize a, a, a Bible verse and then we all went up and that was a part of my Easter speech. And so, yeah, I, I appreciate that, uh, that heritage, the American heritage, a Judeo-Christian heritage, heritage that was passed on uh, uh, to me. Uh, and my family that I also passed on to uh, to my family and my children, and uh, and and so you know today we just want to celebrate. This is our Super Bowl weekend. We want to celebrate the first half. We want to celebrate and 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 just we want to be thankful. So if anything, you just want to call and say, you know what, I'm just thankful. Um, for God, they're giving me an opportunity. You, here, let me just go back for a minute. Go back to Genesis, and uh, just before Noah, uh, uh, Noah before the flood, and the the Bible says that the whole earth was filled with violence. Well, you 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 know, I can we can look around and say, wait a minute, <laughs> it wasn't just in Noah's time. I can look around and see that the whole earth looked just like in Noah's time. And I was just telling Phil that I still love on this little boy, but I watch a kid walk past my business establishment every day. I watched him as he grew up, and this little boy has has morphed from a to a, from a boy and just kind of transmitted himself into into looking like a girl. 
And, and you know what? I still go out there every day and I speak to him. I still go out there and I talk to him because it, I, it, I don't know if that's my mission in that, but, you know, I, I, I I feel that I want to I want to reach out to this little kid because it was a story. I don't know if you heard about it, Phil, and I was talking about it. And I, I don't really want to talk about it right now, but we're talking about it on the other side of the break. But it was a it was some woman that took her her young child to a doctor here in Detroit and, and, and wanted to have, have that child, make sure that that child can have this this reconstructive surgery that's that's torment that, that's going to have this person trapped in an unnatural situation they think they're in an unnatural situation now just think about it you're in an unnatural situation where you can't go back to your natural body now if you want to if you want to color your hair and put some my, mascara on your eyes that's something that's temporary you might not you might not feel a certain way but that's still temporary in the morning you might feel just like you might feel just like a male tomorrow morning but that day you might feel like a female but if you start having going through this transformation and that's why today we have to we have to share uh, the love of God with these young kids. And that's what's missing today. Parents are no longer taking their children to church. Parents are no longer speaking it to them children. See, it's a culture now, Phil, where people are telling their kids, follow your feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's a very dangerous road to go down, following your feelings. And, and uh, they also tell them uh, tell the, their children that um, they shouldn't uh, uh, believe in a spiritual transformation. I mean, the the power of God and the power of faith can change any situation. That's right. They don't they don't emphasize that in any longer. Mm -hmm. So what what we what we see is uh, they are willing to have an operation, a physical operation, mm -hmm. as such as a Bruce Jenner. Yeah has uh, an operation, but they don't want well, you to Bruce read. Well, Bruce haven't had the, the actual surgery reconstructed. I, I, just, I just read that he did. He went on and did it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. This, now, again, yeah. this is permanent. So yeah. now, you know, he, 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 you know they, they done reconstructed the old humanity of, um, of him, and yeah. now they put it in the bag. Now, you think he think, well, I changed my man. Can you put it back together? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But, uh, but I, I, I did read somewhere, and I didn't read the whole story, mm. but, but I did read somewhere where he did the, the final, yeah. you know. So, but, but what I'm saying is yeah. that they could go to that extreme measure and not want you to, to uh, emphasize or try to steer the religious side of this, mm -hmm. not not any phys anything physical, but just to tell somebody to 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 uh, take a chance and take a, a look at uh, the power of faith and the power of uh, you know what it has to change any situation. It can change any situation, you know. Uh, so uh, and prayer. That's right. But but they don't want that. They don't want you to do that, and they and they will. Uh, almost take your children from you if you if you persist and, in a in a, in you, a situation. That's a good point. Like how you said they can take your children. It yeah. used to be where if you put your children in a very unsafe situation, yeah. uh, the state would come in and and they would charge you with uh, per, you know with uh, you know providing your children with an unsafe environment. Yeah. Well, this is child abuse. Yeah. When you, we talk about people that's under the, you know, the steel miners that don't know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's people out here just telling their children. Wait, here, we, we can go into that right yeah. there. But, uh, yeah. again, I just want to say, again, this is, uh, this is uh, this is our, our time right now. Uh, this is our time. We have to share uh, faith with, with people today. We have a culture that needed more than ever. This is just like the time of Noor. I mean, where every man is following 
his own heart, whatever it is that he just believed everything. There is no absolute truth anymore. And and one of the things I want to mention is that uh, it was CNN that created that came up with this fake news fake news um, uh, comment, and it and it ricocheted back on them, and they became. And they have morphed themselves into fake news. Well, it's so much misinformation out here right now that you know that well. Jesus is not the only way. Well, he did say that that through my death, there's only one way to to uh, to the the Judeo Christian God, uh, uh, who is we know we may know as El Shaddai. El Almighty God. We might know him also as El Elyon, which is the the Most High God, uh, or we might know him also as uh, Yahweh, uh, the one who exists before there was anything at all. So that's who we know him is. That's not the same as as Allah. No, absolutely not. You know, I had uh, you know what I worked with a guy that said that you know. We, we, he said there's only one God. I said, no, there's multiple gods out here. There's only one true God. And I believe the one true. He said, well, we're in the same faith, the, the faith of Abraham. I said, well, hold on. Abraham had two sons. One carried the promise and one did not. There was Ishmael. Mm -hmm. uh and then there was Isaac, and so Isaac carried it, and then he passed it on to his son, uh, his uh, uh, Jacob, and so, and that's the Christian, or that's that Jewish lineage right there. And of course, Jesus was a was a Jew, and uh, was Jewish, and and he's, and he also celebrated Jew and customs here uh, while he was on the earth. But then, also, what he did for us is. Uh, now again, the Bible just talks about if the if the devil only knew, but he thought that he was crucified or or torching somebody that was innocent. Well, you know, it was already prophesied that uh, many years, you know, over many different centuries, many different cultures, that all this that Bible was assembled. And, uh, and it prophesied about a Savior, and that Savior would die for all mankind, all mankind. You know, it's more information that's available about, about uh, documented history, you know. And what I mean by that is that God already spoke all these things into existence. Already, so all these things was do documented. Then it's more evidence evidence that he existed that he existed than there is for you know some somebody else that lived hundreds of thousands of years ago there's is documents many thousands of documents and then he also followed down uh, he did exactly what he came here for and you know we know that on friday he you know that he was crucified he and uh, he went into uh, he he was put in the, in this this cave. He went into the darkest place in the center of the earth, and on the third day, he gave us all. He saved us all. And so I see myself as that when he went in that and that and went in that pit, or he went in hell. My spirit went in there with him, and when he rose up. I became a new creature, creature or a new spirit in him also, and so that old spirit has been has been washed away. I received, and so he said that when I received him, now uh, he gave me direct access to our God, to the real true God. And so today uh, for Easter, I want to say, tomorrow take your family uh, to church again. This is what our our our, our well, no matter what church you go to. One thing about our country, our country was built on, it was built on this uh, idea that 
uh, you we that 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 uh, uh, that men and women came here so that they can freely freely serve the Christian God in any way that they want to and any different so we have many different uh, denominations of the Christian faith so however that you want to celebrate it no this is not like King George where everybody want uh, to the same, and you, you're going to worship the same exact way. You're free today to worship God however you want, but there's still only one way, and that's through his son who gave himself. He gave himself, uh, and so we want to celebrate that. That's our weekend. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Phil. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was just listening to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is our weekend right here, and so, and, and more than ever before, Phil, man, I'm telling you, I look around, this culture needed more and more and more. Young people, you, I, you know, I'm sitting there, people talking, I need a drink. <laughs> yeah. In, in the middle of the day, yeah. what you need a drink for? Yeah. Oh, I just, just I'm so bored. Yeah. Bored? Yeah. you at work. And not only that, I mean, look what all that is before us on a daily basis. I mean, the, the, the learning that could be accomplished, yes. the things that could be done, and somebody would rather spend uh, a couple of hours in an in a illusion world of in alcohol or yep. marijuana yep. Or, or something like that. Well, this is what, again, we're going to talk about this on the other side. Is this what they want? Is this yeah. what, you know, the, the, you know, people, the globalists want? They want we they want to drug up our children. They want them on drugs. They want them on alcohol. Yeah. They want them to go out here and, and with all kind of different behavior, let them do whatever they want. They put them in prison. They yeah. put them in prison and giving them loan sentences. They get, you know, uh, they can go before a judge. Now they have what they call mandatory sentences. It don't even matter if you, you know, you caught what, with, uh, with, with twenty or fifty pills. There's now just a mandatory for care having fifty pills, yeah. even though you just might be addicted. Well, there's now a mandatory, of course. I'm glad Michigan no longer have mandatories. Here's some guy hooked on prescription pills just because he got pulled over. He got 50, he got 50 prescription pills that he's addicted to. He's not a drug dealer. There's a mandatory. He would do a mandatory 10 years yeah, in other um, states. Uh, mandatory minimum. Mandatory yeah. minimum. And so uh, this, this is what the globalists believe. The globalists is trying to remove our our Christian heritage from. Us. Yeah, and and uh, the, one of my my favorite uh, verses in uh -huh. in the Bible yeah. is 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 about the sheep and the goats. Yes, I mean I mm -hmm. you know Matthew. Yeah, and and it is it is I've often wondered why it is such a uh, a, a great time when we go to rallies, we go to different places, and we're amongst people that we feel a spirit with. Yeah, uh, and so what we we wonder, and but it's right here in the Bible. Yeah, it, you know about the sheep and the goats. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally know that that when when uh, we've gone to D.C., we've gone to different places. Mm -hmm. It is it is absolutely different from what what you see on a daily basis now because mm -hmm. everybody's going uh, bonkers <laughs> because the you know the well the uh, the right is is taking a little control of what's going on uh -huh. the, the right side of the political spectrum yeah but this 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 particular passage mm -hmm. gives it to you i mean just it it is just amazing mm -hmm. you know and uh, what what it what it says is it's, it says that the Son of Man, as a shepherd, will separate sheep from the goats. What does this mean? And uh, it says, Jesus states he will gather up all people when he returns to the earth as king. Verse 31. He will then divide them into two groups, the sheep and the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Now, <laughs> Uh, is there is this is this trying to tell us something? Uh, I mean, how how long has has the left been called the left and and the right <laughs> been called the right? <laughs> you know, so it, 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 then it says he will then say to the people on his right, "Come, 
you that are blessed by my Father, those who lived a truly converted life and obeyed God, come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. That's verse 34. Christ will then state to those who are on his left, away from me, you that are under God's curse, away to the eternal fire, which has be, been prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 41. Yeah. So now you can see why we, we, we have such a, uh, a, a, an experience every time we mm -hmm. go out among the people because they're on, 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 on uh, the right. They're mm -hmm. on the right side of God, mm -hmm. the right side of yes, God. Yes, yes. You know, not only the right side, but mm -hmm. the right yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, and and it's actually uh, a real pleasure to meet people and uh, and talk to them because they always, they always, you know, give that God bless you. You're yes, doing, sir. You're doing, That's right. you know, and man, I mean, it really feels great, you know, that mm -hmm. we're here. And we're and we can we can we're on the right side of this issue, mm -hmm. uh, from one end to the other, mm -hmm. from from our one. I mean, the top of this thing to you and me both is the abortion issue. Mm -hmm. How can people actually want to say that they support doing something to a helpless infant mm -hmm. uh, in, in, inside his mother's womb just mm -hmm. because she is the caretaker and she chooses to uh, forgo that caretaker role and allow the, 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 the vile and, the, and the, the actual inhumanity of the left side of the argument mm -hmm. to tell her that you have a right to go into your womb and take this baby out and, and mutilate it. Mm -hmm. This is what we and, face and every again, day. That, that surgery, how we was talking about, they can take a, uh, you know, a child, you know, and have him, and he still developing. He don't know, who, or she don't know who they are. Yeah. Uh, now, you, you know, just, we got people that's taken, that, that have women convinced that they can just go and just keep having all these different sur surgeries. Remember, we had a woman uh, on the show, you know, maybe a year ago that said that she had a, uh, with eight nine abortions and yeah. man i thought that was uh that was extreme but again uh, it became it became uh for her it became that became her um her uh what, what, what would i say her purpose in life really i mean to defend well, that I was gonna those say, it became her uh, uh her her you know, instead of taking her protection, yeah. instead of instead of her or, or birth control, it became her birth control, yeah. and that's exactly. what happened. Some yeah. people, after a while, you know, just oh, I didn't. Okay, well, I can just you got two fifty. Just give me, and I can go and, and get rid of it. Yeah. But again, we talked about this that people don't see that this is their legacy. This is. Um, um, you know, this is their see, this is their their, their inheritance. Their this heritage, is their wealth. And this is their this wealth. Is the next generation mm -hmm. that that we are allowing to uh, to be uh, perverted, basically, yeah. because as th these uh, abortions mount up, we we get further and further away from uh, the idea that. That this person, this little person inside that womb, has rights also. Yeah. And and and, and uh, now you hear these people talking. Well, you know, uh, I, I will I will do anything to protect my right to do make that decision. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, okay. You you know, it's you you got a right to do that. It is a right. But but or but I right. say yeah. that that if you if you study and and learn what the truth is then you your right to make that choice will be in the favor of that 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 infant oh, in, within you yeah if you if you understand what the meaning mm -hmm. of that of that infant is yeah, because it says in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, it's uh, Deuteronomy 8, I think it's 31 and 32, it says, I set before you, God said, I set before you life and death, 
blessing and cursing. He adds, he said, now I'm going to tell you which one to choose. Choose life so that you and your seed may live. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, all right. So on the other side, again, this is our Super Bowl weekend. But on the other side, we're going to now deal with the culture. Whatever you want to talk about, uh, give us a call. 734-822-1600. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Listening to the Abolitionists Roundtable, patriotic, red, white, and blue, conservative all access radio, with your hosts, Dell, Phil, and Janice. They're leading the charge in advancing the conservative revolution. Join the conversation at 734 822 1600. Hello, I'm Milt, and this is Logically Speaking Uncensored, a United States essential, English only. One of the most effective mechanisms of warfare, social conflicts, and politics is the tactic of divide and conquer. The tactic of divide and conquer has been a mainstay of despots and tyrants for centuries. Even the Bible admonished in Mark 3.25 that a house divided against itself cannot stay. Before the United States became a nation, the seditionist loyalist forces, allied with England, employed the tactic of divide and conquer. Modern day liberals, also known as Democrats, the heirs of the loyalists, have refined the tactic into a formidable weapon of mind destruction. The Civil War is a prime example of the death, devastation, and mayhem that results when a nation is divided. People by the thousands died and suffered due to the liberals' dedication to a political philosophy of segregation, separation, and slavery. Liberals glory in their ability to camouflage their tactics and repackage them under the banner of political correctness. Liberal efforts to subordinate the English language is part of their plot to implant Spanish as a linguistic wedge to balkanize the United States into socialistic anti-American enclaves. There are many foreign languages spoken in America, so what makes Spanish more important than others? The answer is liberal political pandering, which allows them to perpetrate the fraudulent entity called Hispanics and create more hate American first victims to exploit. The English language is the most widely spoken language in the world. Air controllers, ocean navigators, the internet, space explorations, as well as international commerce and financial transactions are conducted as a rule in English. For years, liberals have fought any attempt to ratify English as the official language of the United States. They have willfully ignored the fact that whomever controls the language controls the nation. The primary language of our founding fathers was English. The Federalist Papers, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and our laws of jurisprudence and congressional legislation are composed and written in English. Making English the national language of the United States is a prerequisite for our sovereignty and is essential for our survival. If we want America to remain strong and united, we who are aware of the liberals' nefarious tactic of divide and conquer must make English only a constitutional reality. There should be no exceptions to this matter, and any citizen, elected official, especially Republican, who does not support the English-only proposition is not an American patriot. For national unity is impossible without a unified language. I am milk, logically speaking, uncensored saying, think about it. All right, great. All right, greetings. Welcome back to the Abolitionist Roundtable. If you'd like to join the conversation, 734-822-1600. Let me just mention, you know that uh, 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 our 
uh, Reverend Yu, the spiritual leader, the spiritual founder of the abolitionist movement, the uh, uh, Joshua Trail, and this morphed in ab Joshua Trail, the abolitionist roundtable became the abolitionist roundtable, and so Reverend Yu is going to be having his annual uh, uh, life right to life um, demonstration at the NAACP. Um, uh, I think the NAACP call it their uh, fight for freedom dinner. And I'm, 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 uh, that's the, the funniest thing I ever heard. They fighting for freedom and they fighting to keep themselves in the Democrat Party that don't the want party, nothing yeah. to do with God, don't the want party, nothing to yeah. do with marriage, yeah. don't want anything to do with reproducing. Uh, they fighting for to keep uh, Planned Parenthood alive in their uh, part of that uh, that platform. So how can they fight for freedom when uh, when the Democrat Party is an anti-life party and so, the anti-freedom party? <laughs> They anti-freedom anti party. Well, they are anti-freedom. That's yeah. a good point. They are anti-freedom because they really don't believe in freedom. They yeah. want they want spe uh, specific uh, rights for specific groups. Mm -hmm. They don't uh, come to the idea that all men are created equal. That's right. They want to tell you that uh, because women have a special idea that they ought to have special rights. And so then they go down the line uh, to, to the skin color, to national origin, to all of this, and then they meet out special rights from the government. Yeah. And, 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 and once they uh, put those rights out there, you see that in what's going on with the, uh, with the Affordable Health Care yeah. Act. You can't get rid of this stuff. It's like a zombie. You mm -hmm. can't kill it. It's already <laughs> dead, and you can't still can't kill it. And they still try to keep it alive. That's right. Thinking it's some, they think it's some kind of goodies in there for them. Well, it is in there. There's some goodies in there for you, but it's something dead that's in there that's your goodies. And, and, and it's, it's, <laughs> in the, the, the productive people in this country yeah. are, are being, uh, I mean, just just turned inside yeah. out with regulations yeah, and stuff. Yeah, you're right. It's a good thing that uh, President Trump did amend this. It, you will no longer be penalized if you don't have this health care insurance because that, that was their other way of forcing you mm -hmm. uh, in it. And then if you didn't get it, well, you would have to, they made the penalty, the penalty affordable. Well, I just paid a penalty. Uh, well, you shouldn't have to be forced to buy a product, right. period. Because what it does is it, it, gives, it gives power over you, mm -hmm. over, your, over your right to, to access certain things. Mm -hmm. It gives it that power to, uh, first of all, it goes to the, 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 the ex, what do they call it, the executive of, over the, uh, the health care fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what uh, they keep talking about with... Um, uh, the the head of uh, what is it HUD or whatever that 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 over the, they say that he can he's got a lot of power and it was invested in Kathleen Sebelius as the as the head of the oh okay health and thing. human services yeah okay at the yeah time. and 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 so now we want to try to use it okay to to make changes and 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 make this thing better this thing needs to be dug up and buried yeah. and done away with for good once and for all well you know we got one problem well, here we're going to get into that but yeah. let me just yeah. say this so the uh they have in their uh fight for uh to stay uh, in bondage dinner i'm sorry it, I, it, I read it wrong. to stay free freedom dinner and uh, and so they're gonna have a you won't believe their speaker. So they're gonna have a speaker at the uh, at their dinner. Well, here first, let me just say this. So revenue always have his demonstration out there because letting them know that you can't fight for freedom if you're not gonna fight and protect the most innocent. Uh, the most vulnerable. You, your most vulnerable, the ones that never committed a crime. I just heard just recently, I uh, feel that. Uh, they just, you know, a judge just blocked uh, this guy that created a, that did a heinous crime. But, well, he would now have the death penalty now um, because by lethal injection, because they call this inhumane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, yeah. you're talking about something. <laughs> now, this, this is somebody that, that created a crime that yeah. did, I mean, that did something the most barbaric 
uh, that 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 it, it, I you know something barbaric. Mm. And so, but then on the other hand, we have somebody that's innocent, never committed a crime, never had their day in court, never had their own attorney, their self of their uh, court appointed attorney. And so they, but they w were sentenced. They got a death sentence. Yeah. And that death sentence, and, and, and so they got lethal injection too. There's a lethal injection in that innocent child. And, and so what they do is they inject that child with this lethal injection to kill that child within the wound field. And then what they do is they'll pull it out. Uh, I heard now what they do is they pull it out in, in parts. And part not the whole uh, child anymore because when the mother see the child when it's when they give give birth to it they see that oh my God that was not just a that was a Blah, real but, whole a, person yeah, there yeah. and so it, on one of the tapes that was something that was said by uh, somebody from Planned Parenthood that they have to now uh, break up the uh, the child before they pull it out in pieces so that the per they, this is what they said so that the person is having the abortion won't see that it was a real living breathing person that they did this to so anyway let me just go back for a minute this is the so the NAACP is having their freedom dinner there um, and their speaker is drum roll <laughs> It's Pocahontas. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it, it didn't say Pocahontas. It says Elizabeth Warren. So Elizabeth Warren <laughs> is their is their uh, their uh, their keynote speaker, and then so they're going to also give a uh, a lifetime achievement award, lifetime achievement award to <laughs> drum roll, <laughs> Congresswoman. James Maxine Waters. <laughs> James Brown, that's who. <laughs> so they give me Maxine Waters their uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award, and so this should be interesting. But what right has there. she achieved? I wish somebody would tell me. See, this is this is what the Democrats do. Yeah. You know, if they don't achieve anything, they they turn around and and, and come up with some kind of award for them. Yeah. And 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 look, let's go back to you know what she achieved every week. She said, "I'm working on impeaching Trump." Yeah, that's what her achievement yeah. is. It's just to be outspoken. I, I know. Well, I know in the back in her district, uh, it's worse than ever. Crime, worse crime rate, worse incarceration, worse dropout rate, uh, worse illiteracy rate. But mm -hmm. what does that have to do with anything? I'm trying to impeach Donald Trump. So last last year we had uh, Hillary Clinton. Uh -huh. Right uh -huh. now, she got the lifetime achievement award too, uh -huh. didn't she? What? What? what I, I don't what know if, if she. Uh, I, is that was she? The no, speaker? she was the keynote keynote speaker. So, so she was yeah. the keynote. So yeah. prior year, she probably received one. She yeah. had one. She yeah, had but one she got somewhere. the uh, the Margaret Sanger Award. She you know, got and, that one too. And, you know, and, <laughs> and, and, and somebody asked her something about uh, the rights of the children, and she said, "Well, you know, children uh, in the womb don't have rights." That's right. You know now. You know what would happen if, uh, let's say Trump said that. Mm -hmm. You know, especially uh, when we know that per per child, most of the abortions are done not not on a on a wholesale number, but uh, but per percentage of people in the in the in the uh, in the populace, black babies are the most aborted. Now, if Trump had uh, said something like that, or Sessions, or any white Republican had uh, said that uh, children in the womb don't have rights, man, we they would have been called every racist mm -hmm. up and down mm -hmm. Detroit and every other major black city in the country. I tell you, it is such a, uh, 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 it, I mean, it just grates me how, it's it's so inconsistent, so much inconsistency. I know you was going to say, well, part. it's a double standard. Yeah, it's a uh, double it's standard, a, but a they're not they're not consistent but, on. But well, liberals, they they don't abide by the same rules you know. that uh, anybody else abide by. That's right. why there's no rules. So you, we we try to put them, you know, try to corner them and and put them in a in a box and say, well, hold on, that's inconsistent with what you said here. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on, they can they can see liberals are always evolving. Remember yeah. President um, Obama. 
he, you know, oh, he was not for gay marriage, right. but what he did is he evolved. He evolved they, yeah. Today, they even trying to talk about Trump. Well, has Trump changed his position? Yeah. No. Trump in that office now has matured and, and he sees things a little different, so he's evolving a little bit. Now, we know Trump don't see things from a idiotic, uh, 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 ideological, ideological yeah. uh, perspective. Yeah. He see it from a perspective, hey, this is business and I'm going to do it from a business perspective, period. And that's all. And, and, and putting itself in a position mm -hmm. to make the best deal. That's it. And that's, and that's what I see it as being mm -hmm. what's going on with uh, how he has done those things. Mm -hmm. He made the, he, you know, we, we're talking about abortion yeah. right now. He made the suggestion first mm -hmm. that, uh, that Planned Parenthood could keep their, uh, their funding if they That's right. stop doing abortion. That's right. Now, oh to, boy. to me, it was up in arms. Yeah, to me, that was, that was a, a, a good starting point. Th that because, was. Because what it is, is we, we're funding parent, Planned Parenthood to have no limits on um, abortion, when it truly says that when when they, it wasn't a law, but when they made that ruling, they just let this open ended. Mm -hmm. The Hyde, <clears throat> the Hyde Amendment, was meant to put some limits on abortion, mm -hmm. but it's not very effective no, it's because not. they always tell you that, uh, well, you know, this is a racist piece of legislation mm -hmm. because it stops. Black women and minorities from being able to access uh, abortion the way the rich white people well, are you know what? able to and, do. And guess what? It, there's a, okay, so if they wanted access, uh, okay, they, it's always been available. But again, we talked about it. It's become uh, a sense of birth control for yeah. some people, and that, and that's where it's just done went overboard. And that's why it's such a when it's so inconsistent mm -hmm. of the Black Caucus and the and the NAACP to say that uh, that they are for this un un uh, unlimited abortion, no no amendments. I mean, no no way to stop some of this. It's just wide open. And it's, it's uh, uh, to me, the, the inconsistency is that, that they'll tell you on one hand that if, if uh, 100 people are killed because of, of police brutality and 70 of them are black, then that is genocide. But when we get to the abortion proportionately, when when black women are only about eight percent of the population and they are accountable for about forty five percent of all Over abortions, 40%. how is that anyway consistent? Well, they, they the, 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 um, unfortunately they have lost their way. They, they, they've lost their humanity uh, when it comes to this right here. Um, and the reason, why, one of the reasons why I believe that they lost their way and it's, be, it's become prevalent and it's become this just second nature is because of young men not being more responsible. Second, because we have a, a decline in marriage. Um, you know, my mother came from a family of, you know, 12. My father came from a family of 9 or 10. And, and so... Then my mother turned around and and but she was married mm -hmm. and she had uh, five children and so yeah the bigger the family the families are tacked together we had we had big families and uh, and families were stronger when the, the there was a mother and father together. Well, now today liberals are now have replaced that the, the parent with a car or big house. You know, you don't need that. Or a bridge uh, card. Or a bridge <laughs> card. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so in well, well, and, and then in some of the urban areas, uh, yeah, you're right. The government has now stepped in and became because. You no longer need, you know, John to come and take care of his responsibility, even though they go after him now for child support. But uh, the government now was subsidized. It was subsidized that family for as long as that those children are in the home. And so it limits um, that that 
that, that, that woman is very independent now, and so unfortunately she. Don't and need, you know, and and everybody wants. She don't need a man. Everybody to they be independent. They made a song in back in the eighties. Yeah. Somebody, I don't need a man. Yeah. You know, because the government has be was the one that was subsidizing that families yeah. and it replaced families. But but everybody wants women and everybody else to be independent and mm -hmm. you know to satisfy their wants and needs on their own. But at the same time, you should be able to have that instinct of the the most basic of all the the rights in this in this world, and that is a, a right of uh, every child to have a father and a mother mm -hmm. that i mean that that's the basic right there that that starts it out from a b c so uh but the the way it goes now is that people are trying to tell you that uh that uh one person can can take the place of two and mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's that's not that's not true mm -hmm. and and uh, we know it yeah. but uh but the only way I see that we can really get this is we have to, those people that are involved in that, that are having the children or not having the children, have to have a change of heart. Mm -hmm. The only way that comes about is that they have to understand what the truth is mm -hmm. and, 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 and hear it on a consistent basis. Uh, time mm -hmm. uh, frame. You know, we need to be in the schools where yeah. these kids are this high because Planned Parenthood and these other organizations are there and they understand that they can influence them. You know, when I was watching a movie and this guy said, you know, I'm really, you know, bringing this neighborhood back. You know, I get, you know, midnight basketball. We get, uh, you know, reading programs. And also we got Planned Parenthood here. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah. so, but yeah, I want to change subjects a little bit. We yeah. heard uh, um, uh, new, new, a new attorney general, Jeff Sessions, said this week that they were going to get serious about border enforcement. Mm -hmm. Again, the reason why we have this open border is the same thing we've been talking about. Uh, the reason why we, we they they're trying to they bring all these people in is to replace the the number of people that was aboard. Yeah, field. exactly and, right. And, but they're not telling people. Yeah. But we know that that's what it is. It's a replacement rate. We need a certain number of replacement, and 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 we have a our replacement rates are real low. Exactly right. Know? And so we need more people paying in Social Security. We need we just need more people just being productive. And so a lot of uh, and now are these people that come across the border? Some of them hard working. Absolutely, they are. But there's still a legal process that we have to go through. And uh, second, some people they are coming work soon as they are eligible for not all, but soon as they are eligible for different resources through the federal government will let throw down that rake yep. and they'll apply for those benefits and they'd be just like the rest of the people that suck it off the government yeah and and, and it, it uh it gets to be a thing of of uh not having the 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 old work ethic that mm -hmm. we used to have in this country oh boy where uh you know i i i, I witnessed this yes. you, you probably did too uh, -huh. uh but but back when i was a kid uh, nobody in the neighborhood <laughs> wanted to, to to go home and not have a father and a mother. That's right. And yeah. and nobody in the neighborhood wanted to, wanted to admit to that <laughs> that uh, that uh, that they were you know having getting uh, back then they had commodities uh -huh. and uh, you know the, those oh, white oh, cans oh, oh, with oh, the, oh, boy. The, the, the can of pork in it yeah. you know and, and you know and and uh. so yeah I mean. It it was a different different world. It was a different culture, yeah. and 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 it was a different mindset. Yeah, you're right. It was uh it was a limited amount of people that did get that stuff yeah. right there. And um and, and let me just say personally for myself, my mother, and father, as a kid, I my parents got divorced. And we went from a, uh, I went from a, 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 I think we had like a four or five bedroom house yeah. uh, all the way down to um, the public housing. Yeah. I went down to, to public housing. So absolutely, I could tell you firsthand, man, that was the worst thing <laughs> yeah. for me ever. Uh, well, folks, we're at the end of the, uh, the show. Um, I would just like to encourage you to take your family to, uh, to Sunday service tomorrow and enjoy your resurrection and your Easter. Phil? Well, it, just that uh, join us at Cobo Hall the uh, 8, 
18th. The, the next, I think it's it's the 23rd. On the 23rd. 23rd. All right. See you next week. See you next week. Abolitionist Roundtable invites the Wham Talk 1600 listeners to continue the roundtable discussions by mailing correspondence to Art of Michigan, Post Office Box 135, Garden City, Michigan 48135. Or follow Phil Dell and Janice at artofmichigan.com. You can also send emails to artofmichigan at hotmail.com. And most of all, continue to listen every Saturday and tell a friend.